Hello there. My name is Justin, and in this video, I will be giving an overview of the Smarter CG and its different components, and also be pointing out some of the key features of the software that sets it apart from its competition. Smarter CG is a character generator, which allows you to have text and graphics displayed on the video signal you broadcast. How is Smarter CG different from other CG softwares? Aside from the many features and abilities that other CGs don't have, it is fully compatible with its own data managing software, the Smarter Data Agent. To learn more about the Smarter Data Agent, please visit www.smarterdataagent.com and watch the tutorial videos. Let's take a look at the Smarter CG interface. At the top, we have the regular tabs, where File lets you open and save VGX libraries or layouts and load them import and export layouts or export page as target file. In the preferences, we can select the video size for render. We then have the edit tab where we can undo, redo, copy and paste where needed. The page tab allows you to skip to next and previous pages or go straight to the first or last page and also by clicking the remove empty page button Smarter CG will automatically detect and delete the last page with no content in it. We can also zoom in and out in the view tab and also refresh the pages in Smarter CG. The help tab contains information about the software and also the help file that contains detailed information about all the components which can help you troubleshoot any problems you run into. The editor button takes you to the editor page and the playlist buttons takes you to the playlist page which we will explain later on this video. On the left hand side in the editor we have 10 buttons to create and import different types of graphics, objects, texts, and animations into our canvas. We can create an object by clicking the object button and clicking on the canvas where we want to start the object, dragging it until the object is the size we want and letting it go. On the bottom, we can give coordinates for the position by entering numbers in the left and top box or by manually dragging the object in the canvas. We can also lock different objects or items in place by right clicking on the object or text and selecting lock position. We can also control the width by clicking the width button and selecting a size. We can also change the size of the object by manually dragging one of the points on the sides of the object to as large or small as we want it to be. We can create a shadow if we want by activating the shadow and customizing the settings. To change the position of the shadow, we click on the different points on the circle at the bottom to adjust the position. To control the distance of the shadow, we can increase or decrease the offset value. The color of the shadow can be controlled in the color tab at the bottom, where you can select a color from the standard colors, or enter a color code for RGB, or loading a custom texture by clicking the image over Option, and loading your image or texture. We can also add an edge or outline the object, text, or item by increasing the width. If an edge is not wanted, you can set the value to zero. The style, type, and position can be changed through these three different buttons. The color also can be changed by selecting the edge button on the color tab and again selecting a color, entering a specific color code for the RGB, or loading a custom texture or image file. We can also label and add tags to any item in our canvas by clicking on the item and typing the tag in the box. If we do not want to see the tags, we can click on the show tags and activate or deactivate. Even if the tags are visible when you render a slide, the tags will not appear on the screen or final output. The settings and graphic options for the box, circle, text, and all the items work the same except for the options in the editor box at the bottom of the page, which has different settings for each item. For specifics on each of the item settings, please refer to the help file. On the right hand side, we have the render section where we can control the render settings for each page. First, there is the target plane where we have six graphics planes, or GRFX planes, ranging from 0 to 5 and three logo planes. 
from 0 to 2. The difference between the logo and graphics planes are that the logo planes are designed for watermarks and logos where you do not want to constantly change them or take them on and off the screen. Therefore, the logo planes do not get cleared off the page when clear all is clicked. Only when they are individually cleared page by page. Aside from this difference, they work exactly the same. The clear all button removes everything that has been rendered off the screen beside the logo planes, and the clear button allows users to individually remove different pages and planes off the screen. We can choose our transition effects and choose the direction, if any, and duration of the effect by entering the amount in milliseconds. Every 1000 milliseconds is one second. There are also two small gray buttons with dots on them. These are two audio tracks where we can load a sound clip to be played every time this page is displayed. For example, if we have an urgent message that needs to be shown to viewers and requires us to get their attention, we can load such an audio clip in a dot .wave format and every time we render this slide, the sound will come with it. The green render button, when clicked, will display all the content of the page you have selected with the transition effect you have chosen for that page. Underneath, we have the external crawl control, which allows users to display the SDA feeds. A small note here, to allow you to have full control and no limitations, Smarter CG can be loaded twice, where one copy can be used to receive the SDA feed along with any logos you want, and the other copy allows you to display all the other content you desire, such as the other crawls, banners, animations, and text rolls. To set up Smarter CG to receive and display the SDA feed, we create a crawl on the page we want and type at least one character, like a dot, and on the bottom create a tag for it by clicking on the crawl and typing in all capital letters SDACG1 or SDACG2 or SDACG3 without any spaces in between. Then click add tag. We then choose the target plane. Here I chose graphics 0. Another small note, since I have dedicated this plane for my crawl control, I cannot use this same plane above for anything else, because if the same plane is rendered again, the content will replace and cut off my SDA feed. After doing so, I click the run button and begin to display the messages from the SDA. We can also change the size, color, crawl speed, and other settings, like a regular object or crawl in the editor settings at the bottom of the page. If we want to access the SDA software from the Smarter CG, we can do so by clicking the SDA button on the bottom of the screen or by manually launching the software. Now let's take a look at one of the really valuable features of the software, which is its animation capabilities. Smarter CG comes preloaded with its own unique animation builder, allowing you to import Flash, HD video, or even 3D animation files into your pages with the VXA Builder. To import an animation in our canvas, we click the Animation button and choose where on the screen we want to place it and click on the canvas. A window pops up and asks you to locate and import the file. The file format, however, has to be a specific format, which is .vxa. You must convert your animation file to .vxa format. To do this, you must convert or export your original animation to a Targa image sequence using 32-bit pixel resolution setting in the software you use to create it. In this case, I used After Effects to create a simple animation and show you how to export your animation in target image sequence file. In After Effects, I have a pre-made lower third bar with motion ready to export. I click Make Movie, click on Lossless Settings, I change QuickTime to target sequence. I click Format Options to make sure the resolution is 32 bits per pixel. I create a destination folder for the images to go and name my file and click export. Once you have your image sequence, we then import it into the VXA builder. 
To import our image sequence to VXA Builder, we click on the button to browse and import image sequence. After we select the first image, the Builder will automatically import all the images for the sequence and load them in VXA Builder. We then click the Prepare button to render the images. After the images are rendered, we can click the Save As button to select the destination for the VXA file to be saved. We can now import the saved VXA file in Smarter CG for broadcast. Now how do we create a series of slides to be scheduled to play in a specific order at different times with different durations? We can add a new slide by right clicking on the left hand side where the slides are shown as a thumbnail list. We can create as many as we like and put different text, objects, animations, and pictures on each one. Now that we have our four slides, we can put them on different layers and give them each their own effect. Keep in mind that if we want one slide to take the place of another when rendered in the playlist, we must make sure that they are on the same plane. So if slide 2 is on graphics 1, and I want slide 3 to replace slide 2, then slide 2 and 3 must both be on the same plane. Here, it's graphics 1. If, however, I want slide 2 to be displayed while slide 1 is still on screen, I will have to put that slide on a different plane and click Render. In the editor, we click on the slide we want, then we go to the upper right hand side of the screen, and choose which layer or plane to have this slide on. Let's choose fade and we'll type in how many milliseconds long the transition should last. I'm going to put 6,000 milliseconds meaning 6 seconds. In the playlist page we can set up the order settings for these slides to be played in a playlist. We can change most of the render settings of the editor page again here in the playlist page. Here we can rearrange the different pages and put them on different planes. We can also change the types of transition effects of each page. We can set how long the slide will stay on the page by entering the duration in the Still field. If we want a slide to continue to be displayed after the still duration is finished, we choose Stay in the endpoint. If we want the slide to be cleared after the still duration is over, we choose clear in the endpoint. After your playlist is set up, you can click the loop button. So when the last slide is finished, the playlist automatically restarts. Now, we can click the play button and begin the playlist. If we want to stop our playlist, we can do so by re-clicking the play button. And to clear whatever is being displayed, we can do so by clicking the Clear All button. Alright, that's everything. We've just taken a comprehensive look at all the different features and components of Smarter CG. With all the capabilities of Smarter CG, the possibilities are endless.